All right, guys, we are back in the garage with the 2016 Africa Twin. Today, we're talking about crash bars. If you don't have crash bars on your Africa Twin, you're making a big mistake. Now, because they're called crash bars, a lot of us think they're only good for crashing, but crash bars serve multiple purposes. Yeah, they protect the side of your bike. If you fall over, they protect your engine, but they also serve the purpose of carrying extra luggage and mounting auxiliary lighting. Now, the crash bars I chose are by Givy. They follow the lines of the bike really well. They're not super expensive. They have great coverage. They come up high in the front. So today I'm gonna to show you the basics of how you hook them to the bike. I'm gonna show you the lighting I have and where I'm gonna mount it. You can see right now, I already have crash bars on my bike. These are by Outback Motorec. And these are good. I mean, they got good coverage, especially down low. But the thing is, they stay down low. They don't come up high on the bike here or go around the front. If I wanted to mount lighting or luggage, can't really mount luggage on these because they're too low and lighting would be, you know, you could put lights here, but I like my lights to be a little bit higher. So I'm going to pull these off and dig into the Givy bars. So let's do it. Now, before we mount them up, let's show you how they come. There's an upper crash bar and a lower crash bar. You buy these separately. They come in black steel, which is what I have, or they come in stainless steel. Stainless steel is silver. It's lighter, it's probably stronger. Now for the black uppers, you're looking at $225. For the stainless steel uppers, you're looking at $301. And for the engine guards, for the black steel, you're looking at $195. For stainless steel, you're looking at $319. So total pricing for black, $420. For stainless steel, $620. I also wanna show you some of the hardware it comes with. You got these mounting brackets here. You got these plastic covers right here. And obviously all the mounting hardware, spacers, nuts, bolts, washers, the works. And then over here, got instructions. I'll know how good these are once I dig into them, but so far they look so good. So let's get started. All right, guys, I wanted to give you a little bonus feature. I figured before I put the crash guards on, I want to put new air filters in the bike. I don't know what's in there, and I bought the bike used. So I pulled off the fairings, and let me show you, they're actually pretty easy to get off. Um, you'll see there's a screw right here, you know, right there, see that hole in your upper fairing area. It's an Allen head. And then down here, just take the screw out of this panel right here and behind it, you know, you'll see your fairing comes in and it just plugs in there. It's just, a, it just pops out. So there's one there, there's one here, there's one down here, there's one up here. There's, uh, make sure you pull this screw out right here. I just backed it out and it's still in there. And then underneath here, you wanna take out those little, these things here, these plastic um, body panel devices. And there's three of them. There's like one here, 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 and then there's one up here at the top. Take all those out. And then you basically just tug on the panel, start pulling it off, pull it off, and then kind of pull it forward. You've also got one here and here in the front, so pull it forward as you're pulling it off, and there'll be one down here at the bottom. And it just pops right off. And then to get the air filter out, you just have four screws, one here, one here, they're Allen heads. Uh, there's two more down here. Put some light on it, uh, flashlight, there we go. There's one in here, and there's one right there. Those two screws will stay in place. These two screws come out all the way. You just pull the panel out, this pops right out, just comes right out without any screws holding it, and the air filter is behind there. Once you get the cover off, just undo these two Phillips head screws. One here. Oops, I'm doing this as we speak. And one here. You can see, look how dirty that is. I don't know what kind of miles is on this thing, but it doesn't look pretty. And just pops right out. And their filters I'm replacing those with is BMC. I don't know, I've used these guys in all my sport bikes. Really like them. Check them out. Look here, you can see the difference between whatever came out of there. It's like a cloth filter. I don't know if that's stock or what. Pretty cheap looking. And then the BMC has that nice mesh with the fabric. Kind of like a K&N filter. So, yeah, I really like these. Slides right in. Screw it back on. So step one for installation is I removed the exhaust, which was pretty easy. I went ahead and ran a wire up to the grip here so it's not hitting the ground. And you take the brackets that come with the kit and you just add them to your existing motor mounts in the front. 
you use the two bolts here that come with the kit. And I'm keeping these loose for now until I get everything bolted up and I'll make sure everything's gonna line up with these other holes here. And let's go on to step two. All right guys, stage two is putting on the engine guard here. You can see I haven't tightened it down yet, but I have it bolted in place. There's just two bolts with nuts and washers right here that go into the bracket you just put on where the motor mounts are. And then back here, it gives you these two screws right here to go in. Now this bracket right here is what comes stock on the bike. It holds these hoses. Make sure you put this back on. Let's put these two bolts on right here and it's all in place. Now, once again, I'm not gonna tighten anything down until I get everything bolted up. The next step is putting on the lower front braces. Um, the brace goes from here to here. It bolts in right here. So I have this bolt in here and it's still loose. Then down here, you remove the stock lower engine bolt. It's a really long bolt. To do that, remove this plastic guard that's sitting like right here. It kind of gets in the way, really easy to take off. And the kit comes with this spacer right here. So you put the bolt through to the spacer, goes through the front of the engine. Then over here, there is another lower brace right here. Your, here's your engine bolt right here with a nut. Here's a new bracket that comes with the kit. It's bolting into the right side lower engine guard with this bolt right here that I just snug down. Everything's still loose. And then back here, you have, this is another reason to have the exhaust out of the way. These two lower bolts right here, they need to come out. And the only way to get them out is to have this out of the way. Pull these out, put on this bracket right here, put those back in, and then the lower engine uh, guard comes in right here and bolts into that. And like I said, everything is still loose. So let's keep moving. All right, so if you're only installing the lower crash guards, you could just tighten everything up and be done with it. But we're doing the upper crash guards too. Let me show you what comes in the kit. All right, so obviously we have the left and the right crash bars themselves. Then over here comes with quite a bit of uh, hardware. This is your nose piece. You got some brackets here that connect the pipes together, nuts, bolts, washers, um, more tubing here. Comes with these plastic covers. These came with the lower guards. Um, came with more of these for the upper guards here. And then we have some pipe, uh, looks like some tubing um, couplings, I guess you'd call them. And then more directions here. It looks like the first thing is the nose piece goes on there. So that is this piece right here. Funny thing is, it says it comes with this long piece of like an adhesive. And this is actually what it came with right here. It's pretty short. Maybe that's all you need. Um, let's do it. All right, guys. So yeah, the first part we're putting on is the nose piece right here. I already have it in place. I have the high fender kit on this bike. So I took the fender off to get access to it. And basically what it does is it just connects to the two bolts right here that are existing on the bike. And know that the, the lower nut is welded in place, so you can't spin it. But the upper nut, their crown nuts, it does spin. So uh, the kit comes with two bolts. I'll say this, the bolt for the upper mount seemed like it could be about a quarter inch longer, but I did get the nut to start threading on there. So I'm leaving this loose for now until I get it all bolted together. Let's go on to the next step. Okay, so this upper crash bar right here was super easy to put on. Um, you just put the coupling in there, right here, and it's got the two O-rings. You see these O-rings right here on each side. You just slide those on this piece here. It slides in there, and then you got these two screws that come in the bottom. I haven't tightened them down yet. And then down here, it goes into the same place where the lower crash bar mounts to this bracket. You just pull those two bolts out that were in there, put in the two longer bolts that come with the upper crash bar, put the nuts on the back side, and it's all it's all in place. What I like about this is I thought it was going to be closer to the bike, but I got a nice gap here and right here. So, I mean, it's probably going to tighten down by like that, but you can see it's still got a pretty good gap between the crash bar and your fairing. Let's move on. All right, guys. So I'm putting on this crossbar right here and I'm finding a bit of a challenge. Um, you see these brackets that attach the, the bars together here at this junction point right here those pieces are supposed to intertwine like that but when you do that you can see that it doesn't fit snug on the pipe so i'm having a lot of trouble getting the bolts in there so what i'm doing is i'm wrapping a piece of uh gorilla tape around the end here um, just wrap it around to protect it i'm taking a pair of vice grips or not vice grips but channel locks and i'm squeezing it right here and as i squeeze it at this point here 
I'm putting in the upper bolt where my thumb is. And then what I do is once I've done that, I can put in the lower bolt, take off the tape and I'm done. To show you guys better what I'm talking about, I have this in place. I have the teeth meshed together and I have the bolt just slid in, but it's not all the way through because you can see it's not fit tight to the pipe. And I have my tape right here, my Gorilla Tape. So when I take my channel locks and I squeeze it, I'm not gouging the crap out of it. And then once I squeeze this enough, I can put the nut on the back side and pinch everything down. All right guys, the complete card system is on. It's all bolted down tight. Let's take a look. And there it is. Now what I love about the Givy crash bars is this is what attracted me here is the shape of this. The way it flows with the body lines of the bike. Plenty of protection down here for the engine. Put in this brace right here. It's super sturdy. I love the way it comes around the front. Nice and clean. Now, I mentioned earlier in the video about putting auxiliary lights on these crash bars. And I put my lights on. I haven't wired them up yet, but I do have them mounted onto the Gibby crash bars. And you might be wondering, well, why do I have two on one side? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have, these will be white, you know, the white light and these will be the yellow light. You can see there's yellow. These lights are from Oxbeam and you can make them either white or yellow. You make them flashing, they have different modes. Very cool, I'm excited to get those wired up and I'm gonna do a video about that. In case you're wondering, these are them right there. Here's another angle here of how the lights look on the bike. One thing I like about adventure bikes is when they have cool lighting. It looks cool, it's way safer. Obviously better visibility in dark situations, but my biggest thing is I want to be seen as good as possible because I ride mostly in the daytime. So am I happy with the kit overall? Very happy with it. Took maybe four hours to put it on and um, I think it looks fantastic. So check out Givy, uh, readily available over at revzilla.com. Also earlier in the video, I showed you guys these covers here. These are just an accent piece. If you want to use them, um, you can find a straight part on the bars and you can mount it up something like right there or maybe right here. I'm probably not going to mount them up because I'm probably going to put some luggage here with everything I got going on. I don't really think there's a good place to put it, but it's really just an accent piece. And I guess that's about all there is to it. Uh, make sure you like, subscribe, come back for more videos. We are going to do a video about the lighting here. I'll get them wired up. We'll test them out. See you guys next video.